God Hits. for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. So guys, today is going to be quick. It's not even going to be five minutes, but I'm going to straight up tell you, hold on to the word of God. I spoke to one of my longtime friends recently, and I was asking her how she was able to hold on to her hope in insurmountable circumstances, circumstances that Maybe one day I have her come on and she can kind of share the things that she's gone through because it's been quite tremendous. And for the majority of those things, I walked with her through those processes and I saw God move. So the other day I just had some questions and when we reconnected, I asked her, I said, well, how did you get through those times? Because y'all, she went through things to the point where it was literally the stark opposite of what God told her. It was uncanny. It was to the point where everybody around her was saying, hey, I don't even know why you're still hanging on. Not that people were hating, but she was going through so much pain and so much anguish. People just didn't want her to hurt anymore. You know, and I think that's what happens a lot of times too when people are not necessarily mature in certain areas spiritually. They may wrongly possibly maybe inspire you to do the opposite of what you were believing in. But it's very hard, especially for people that really love you. Not people who fake it, but when people really love you and they really care about you, if they see something that's causing you pain or somebody's not treating you right, most people are like, forget them. And you know I'm not really using the the, the right word that people would say right there, the normal expletive <laughs> goes there. Because nobody wants to see somebody they care about get mistreated and handled wrongly by somebody who, you know, they feel is, you know, they're trying to look at it in a positive way, or even if it's a situation, if a person keeps trying and trying and trying and attempting to do something, and then all of a sudden they're like, God, like this is just not happening. A lot of times, again, people who love them and care is not just always a hater will maybe try to inspire them or encourage them to go another way because they don't want to see them fail continuously and they don't want to see them hurt continuously. Okay. So with that being said, when I asked her, how come she was able to hold on even though everything was the exact opposite? Multiple times, mind you, not just in one instance. She said, I held on to the word of God, literally. So people say that all the time. Hold on to the word, hold on to the word. That sounds so easy, but it's not. And what she bro basically broke down was this. You have to just remember who God is. And usually when we are in our flesh and we are desperate for something and we are looking for something to happen, somebody right now, you know the power of God, but you have been waiting so long and you have been caught up so long in really hoping this thing came to pass. It's almost like you're just throwing, throwing out the window how powerful you know God could be and how he's been and how he's proven it throughout your whole life. So she just says simply just hold on to the word. Hold on to the word. And I mentioned it so many times on here, y'all. God exalts his word above his name. So hold on to the word of God. Because even if God the Father himself <laughs> exalts his word above his name, then the least we can do is just hold on to the very word that he gave us. And I'll say this one last thing. For those of you who are believing for marriage, you're believing for God to bless your business, you know, you're believing for God to do all of these things. I want you to think about something. Instead of maybe putting a particular person in a blank for your spouse, just do Genesis 2.18. Stand on the word of God, but maybe not put so much focus on the person, but put the focus on the fact that God does not want you to be alone. If you're a person who is praying about your business and you're like, Lord, I don't know which way it's going to go, that's fine. You can simply do Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 13. You can ask the Lord to bless the work of your hands. And sometimes, y'all, we got to stick to the literal word of God and just put our promises to the side. Now, put your promises to the side and don't believe them, but your promise and your prophetic word should never supersede the actual word of God. Those are just earmarks. Those are just things that you get here and there because, listen, they come in part. You'll never get no prophetic word and it's full on everything. You never see how it always comes together because God never does that. If he did, there would be no need for him. So consider that. Somebody who's starting to get stressed out because they're waiting on a promise, calm that word. Pray in the spirit. Ask the Lord to show you, lead you, and guide you. 
connect those prophetic words that you got in, in, in your in your real life, in your waking life. Connect those with his word and focus more on the word of God and just make sure you don't idolize the prophetic. You don't you don't put it on a pedestal. You don't you don't use it for something that is not supposed to be used for. It it, it has three meanings. OK, and, and I did a whole video on it. I'll link that in the description. And sometimes I say everything and sometimes I don't. But I want to encourage you to go look up, look it up for yourself. There's a scripture and it breaks down exactly what the prophetic is. But I'll put that video down there for you to see it, too. But at the end of the day, I want you to be encouraged. Hold on to the word of God. If your prophecies are seeming too heavy, if there are people mentioning those prophecies, if it's particular opportunities mentioning those prophecies, and you are starting to get stressed out because with your natural eye, you can't see it, keep them, trust God for them, believe them, and know that his word never comes back void. But gently sit it to the side. Just put it in your peripheral. You don't have to throw it away. Put your eyes back on the Bible. Put your eyes back on the actual scriptures and the word of God and just trust it's all going to come together. Because what that's going to do, that's going to keep you from idolizing it. And that's going to keep you from not focusing so much on what another human being says. Even if they're telling you something 100% true, you're focusing on making sure that all of that lines up with the word of God. Because again, that word never comes back void. And I would much rather you have more faith and belief in the actual word of God than trusting a prophetic word that you may have gotten and you have to wait for it. And it has these details that you just don't know anything about. And then it starts to create a breach in your actual connection with God because now it starts pulling on your faith. That's how the enemy works. He gets sneaky like that. Okay, keep your prophetic word, keep your mind right, but focus on the actual word of God in this season, y'all, and in, in all seasons. But for right now, to relieve your stress, reset yourself. Ask the Lord, where do you want me to put this prophetic word? What do I need to focus on? And you got to hear that. You have to hear that for yourself. You have to hear that for yourself. But trust me when I tell you, I know it beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you hold on to the word, you're going to see that thing come to pass. I'm wired to inspire. I hope you are too.